Hello again, interwebs. I'm Bobby with Madness Labs. Uh, last tutorial, we covered a little bit about Git and how to use Git in order to sync your changes to GitHub. Um, and in this video, we're actually gonna get into some code. So um, one thing that um, you might wonder when you first start out is what the hell is HTML? So HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And basically it's the layout for um, your web page. So I think a website can put this a little bit better than I can. So here you'll see we have the w3schools.com uh, website and they give us a really good overview. Um, here on the home page we can see HTML is the language for building your web pages and we see a little example off to the right. Then CSS is the language for styling your web page, adding all the colors and kind of um, laying things out. And then we actually have JavaScript which is the language for programming web pages. And hopefully over the course of these tutorials, we can actually dive into each one of these um, and start to lay the foundations for making web applications. So starting with HTML, um, the general concept is pretty simple. So when you type in a web page in your web browser, it sends a request off um, via many hops over the internet until it eventually finds the uh, website's DNS server or the domain name server. And so what that server is going to do is take that address and convert it into an IP address and forward it on to the actual server that hosts the website. Sometimes that's the exact same uh, server that is the DNS. Um, but a lot of times, especially these days, um, it's a completely separate server somewhere else on the internet. And so once it converts into that IP address and it sends it to the right place, that web server then serves up some kind of a page. Um, in some cases, it can be a um, HTML page. In some cases it can be an ASP page. Um, what it serves back is kind of up to that website and the stuff that they use. But in our case, we're gonna use HTML. So let's go ahead and uh, break this, this document down a little bit. Every HTML document, um, when it's handed back, gets rendered by the browser, and it always starts at the top with a doc type. So the doc type gives the browser an idea about what kind of HTML document it's dealing with. Um, this doc type here that I've highlighted in blue is the HTML5 doc type. It's been extremely simplified from previous versions. Um, and then after that, we actually have the first tag, the HTML tag. And this is what everything inside of your entire document is going to go inside. Then inside of that, um, and actually they missed, they missed a, a head tag, which is hilarious. Um, so inside of that, you'll have two tags, um, the head tag and the body tag. And the head tag is going to hold all of the information, meta tags, and things like that that help the browser understand uh, what your web application or website or page is about, um, as well as other tweaks and things um, and variables to kind of inform search engines and social networks and things like that who scrape through the internet and find your website, how to deal with your application or how to display it, um, which we'll get into more in the future videos. So then you have the body tag, and this actually contains the body of your application. So this is all the stuff that you actually see on the screen. And note that HTML um, is the code that we write. However, when it's, when it's put into the actual browser and it's rendered, it actually becomes the document object model or the DOM. It gets rendered into the DOM, this giant JavaScript object that we actually play with. Um, and that's what our JavaScript uses to write functionality, or that's what we use JavaScript to edit and add functionality to. So I'm gonna be using this W3 Schools throughout these videos um, just because um, it's a really great learning resource. They've got references for everything, examples, and all these different things. So rather than make a bunch of slides and all these things, um, we're just gonna stick with using something that's readily available. There's tons of other resources out there. Um, there's even uh, code tutorials that teach uh, a lot of this stuff a lot more in depth. But we're just gonna give you the bare, ba uh, bare bone basics within like 10 minutes. Um, so Let's start with a project that uh, we spun up on GitHub uh, in the last video. And we're gonna see that I've got nothing in this project. I've just, I've just got a readme. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the project again in VS Code. So you can do that by going to File, Open Folder. And then you can actually browse to the folder on your computer and then open that up and you'll see that it pops open something like this. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in an index.html. So index.html is the default page that's served up by a web server. Um, 
This is uh, this can be edited, it can be changed. However, this is kind of the standard. Um, so also default and other things like that can be used. But again, index is kind of the industry standard for uh, the default page served from the web server. Um, and you can think of that much like an index from a book. That's kind of where the references come from. Because again, these were HTML documents, um, which means that they were supposed to be originally uh, used to share information, scientific documents and stuff like that. It's only um, in the last you know, couple of years that we've actually turned the web into an application platform um, with the dawning of HTML5 and things like that. So enough nerding out, let's actually write some code. So um, it would be really, really, it would be really, really time consuming for me to show you how to write every single tag inside of an HTML document and I have a terrible memory. So let's use the code completion tools that, um, that VS Code gives us uh, called Emmet and we will actually just like have it generate some code for us. So by typing HTML colon five and then clicking tab, it's gonna automatically insert an HTML5 um, layout for an HTML page. So now we can just get right into it. So as I said before, we have our doc type at the top that's the HTML5 doc type. Then we have an HTML tag that wraps the entire document with a language that just sets it to English because we're English speaking. And then we have the head with some meta tags in it that set like some character sets. Um, they set some uh, viewport style or uh, viewport um, width and device scaling. And then we have a, an HTTP equiv UX AAY compatible. Da, 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 da. It's it's just basically some some real basic. Um, variable configuration for the different browsers out there. Um, and then we have the title tag. So the title tag is required and basically this is the title that appears on the actual browser's tab. So for instance, this GitHub page here has the title popcorn 245 slash portfolio. This is my portfolio. So that's actually in the, uh, in the title tag in the head of this document. And I can actually see that by right clicking and going inspect. And then I can open up my head tag here and if I scroll down, I can see there's the title tag and there's exactly what we see reflected in the tab. So again, this is kind of how the head works. The head is about configuring different um, variables for search engines and for the browsers so that things display correctly. Um, it's not usually generally things that you see on the page, that's what goes inside the body of the document. And here, um, even though we haven't got into it, um, this is DevTools and it's going to be the coolest thing ever when you're debugging your application and trying to figure out what you want to change. It has a nice style panel to actually show you all the styles that are applied to an element. It has a console to let you know all the JavaScript stuff um, that's going on inside of the page, um, as well as um, the actual elements that are inside of your, your DOM, because this is the representation of the DOM. Um, and again, this is not the code that you actually write. It's a representation of the current state of the code as represented by the DOM. And this will all become clear as we kind of write code. So now we've got our document. Let's go ahead and just call this my portfolio. And then let's just put some text in the body so we can see it. Hello world, this is going to be beaten to death. Okay, so now we've got some basic generic content. So how the hell do we view it? Um, to do that, go into your browser and do control O for open. And we'll be outside of DevTools for this. No. So when I do control O, it's gonna open the uh, open file prompt. So now we can actually go browse to where we've stored this project, which is in my apps, and then I have portfolio, and you can click on the index.html that we created, and it's going to open up in the browser, and we can see that up here in the tab title, we have my portfolio, what I put inside of the title tag inside of the head, and then we have the text, hello world, that I wrote inside the body, popping inside of the body of the document. So let's get a little bit more complex with this. Let's write some other tags. So now we can use some basic tags um, like H1. And these are heading tags. So they're, think of the, again, these are documents. So think of a document like writing a Word document. So they have different pre-built um, font stylings and things like that that we can use much like a Word document. So H1 is like that big bold title that you put at the top of a report. So I can put like, uh, popcorn 245's portfolio. And now if I save that, go back to the browser and refresh, I can see a nice big bold H1, a heading one. And so 
why are there all these different tags? Why are all these things uh, existing? Well, this is because of the fact that um, the, the search engines and things that read over the actual page structure kind of can get an idea of what importance is on this page. So H1s, H2s, H3s, all these different things give it a, an idea of what this page is generally about. Um, so along with the meta tag, the things that it gets out of the head, it also can read through the page and actually see what the page is about. So when the search engine sees this page, it's gonna say, oh, hey, this H1 element has Popcorn 245's portfolio. That must be what this page is about. Um, and it is indeed. So now let's try another tag, H2, and say, I do a lot of cool websites. So now if I go back to the browser and then refresh, I now have a slightly smaller H2 tag rendering some text. And we can continue on with this, right? H3, H4, all the way down to H6. And they generally do the same thing. Like I said, think of it like the headings and stuff inside of like a Word document or Google Docs. So we can also do something called a paragraph tag. And this is just a general block of text. Um, no special sauce. This is just going to be real general text. This is a lump of text. And we go back to the browser and refresh. And now we see a very you know non-bolded, non-popping out lump of text, um, which you've probably seen on many websites. So that's your basic tags. That's how that practice works. It's very simple. And then tags can also go inside of each other. So maybe this tag here, maybe I want to put a B tag around it, which is a bold tag. And I want to bold that word. So now when I refresh, that word is going to be bolded. So something to note is that if you notice, all of these things are tabbed out. So they have a little bit of spacing to let us know what is inside of, of what else. So it, in this case, like in this paragraph tag, I might want to do something like this, where I actually bump this down a line, and then bump this down a line, and then bump this down, like so. And though that looks a little strange because we, we don't really think of that as like semantically correct, um, this is probably the way that you're gonna to wanna to do it. And the reason why is because, see these lines here, these guides? These guides are gonna let us know what we've opened and what we've closed. Because if you forget something, like for instance, if I forgot to close this bold tag, then it's actually going to like break our code. So we can save this and we can go back over and you'll notice that my bold doesn't stop because I haven't closed that tag. Um, so by, by bumping these things down and, and putting this tabbing in there, we can actually see what we've closed and what we haven't. Um, the syntax highlighting can give us some kind of clue, like if I forget right here and write blump for some reason, um, you can see that I get a little red denotation here saying that like, hey, something's wrong and so I don't know how to color this correctly. Um, so that gives us a little hint, but again, keeping this tabbing is extremely important especially when you start syncing your code to GitHub and you start working with other people. Um, this can cause some kind of issues when it tries to merge your code together if you don't have things properly tabbed out because um, it'll get confused. So let's fix this guy back up. So other things that we can do, we can write uh, something called a div. And a div is just kind of like what you use when you don't know what else to use. So, um, and again, it, it's just gonna have some general text in it. And it looks very similar to a P tag. And if we inspect it, we can see the difference between it and the P tag is that the div doesn't have any inherit styles except for display block. And we'll get into CSS in the, in the very next video. But basically, this is gonna tell this element just to take up the entire width of the screen. If we highlight over it, we can see that happening. Um, the paragraph tag has a couple more styles on it. It has some actual margins and things like that. And these are applied by the actual browser. So there's a general idea. Um, we can do other things inside of here. Like we can, for instance, make a list. So if we wanted to do UL, and I'm gonna use Emmet here again. And inside of that UL, there's going to be LI three, oops, three LIs. So I can say test, test two, test three. So this is an unordered list, and basically what that's gonna create is a list of bulleted items. Again, this is very similar to what you've seen inside of a Word document. 
Um, we can also do an OL or an ordered list. So OL and we're gonna do LI and then there's going to be times three, boom. Um, milk, eggs, cheese. Go back to the browser, refresh. And now this is gonna give us an ordered list. So it's got the number um, next to the actual list items. So, and that's actually what the LI tag is. It's a list item inside of that list. So this is the general practice of writing HTML. So it's basically just creating these tags um, or elements and basically then filling them with other elements or text. Um, there's also some other special tags, like for instance, a BR, um, which is a break tag or an HR, which is a horizontal rule, which they cannot have text, they ha cannot have content. And so they actually close the tag inside of the opening tag. Whereas in a UL, we have an opening and a closing tag to denotate that this could have content inside of it. So let's save that and then refresh over here and we'll take a look. There's a horizontal rule. So this is the general practice of writing HTML. It's actually very, very simple. Um, the hardest part is actually figuring out what tags to use when it's appropriate. And that's something that you kind of figure out over time. And it also depends on the project you're working on and how compliant you need to be with search engines, et cetera, et cetera. There's some websites out there, though I wouldn't recommend it myself because I'm very, um, uh, I'm very uh, adamant about semantic, making things semantically correct. Um, there's a lot of websites out there that use nothing but divs to make their entire website. And that is valid HTML and that will work. Um, however, again, it's just kind of user preference and it depends on the use cases. Um, so if you'd like to learn more about this stuff, head on over to W3Schools. Um, they have an awesome uh, HTML reference that will tell you all of the different tags that you can use and there is a ton of them. Um, and they also have um, a step-by-step -step kind of tutorial. If we can go back, come on, you can do it. So they also have a learn HTML where they'll actually step you through these things one by one to actually show you these same concepts that I've kind of broken down very quickly in this video. So now that I've made my changes, I wanna make sure to submit this stuff to GitHub so that when I pull this down on another computer or when I'm working uh, later, I don't have to worry about if this computer dies, losing my code or, or any kind of problems happening. Um, so I wanna just go ahead and commit this and say add index page to project and commit that and then sync it up. Simon's Jackson. Ooh. Okay, so now it should be about done. Yeah, come on, you can do it. Okay, so now that we see that there is no updates that need to be pulled down or pushed up, it should be available on GitHub, and we can uh, confirm this by opening up github.com forward slash popcorn five slash portfolio. And now you can see that I now have my index.html file and we can see the last commit from 37 seconds ago and that it's now available online. So now if I open this up on, or clone this down on another machine or have it on another machine, I can now hit that sync button, pull it down, and then I have all my new changes. So that's the general um, gist of HTML, how it works and how to get started. Um, in the next video, we'll start to cover CSS and what we can do with it. Thanks guys.